<laughs> How you doing, man? Nice to meet you, Chip. Good, Good to meet you. Too, up in, uh... No, I won't say nothing about the curtains and all that. Just so you guys, <laughs> just so you guys know, everything that you're saying right now is a matter of record. I, I went oh, live no. with, the, with the pre-show. Oh no! Well, if if anybody is listening, I know yes, it is pre-show, and we kind of you know, you know, do some crazy talking <laughs> during the pre-show so but uh yeah don't don't hold me accountable this is that we're blaming yogi today just because i don't want to blame myself <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we already got some people in the chat we got hit up on uh facebook and and the twitters all the What's... social all the social medias <laughs> yeah the one day and i'll uh pull that up the one day that we're actually uh which you know, uh, link do you want, uh, Chip? Uh, for, I guess, the chat or whatever. Oh, the chat is uh, twitch.tv forward slash ob1x2. Twitch.tv. What was that? Forward slash uh, ob1x2. O-B-I-O-N-E-X-2. Yep. 14. ob O B I O N E X two. Yes. It. This is a random thought. I, I I know why I hate touch screen phones so much. I, every time I get fingerprints on them, I go baddie. Oh, you yeah, you just get used to that and buy a lot of uh wipe little pet uh, so uh wipes. What do we call you, Chip? Uh hang on, I gotta fi- I gotta find the mute here. Oh yeah, you don't want to double audio. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> uh you can call me Chip, you can call me Captain Chaos. Either one works. Okay, aka. I like it. We got a theme tonight of uh, Gruffy mm. Gruffy Portly Men. Chaos. <laughs> the three the three All amigos. Right, so uh <laughs> title of horseplay, horseplay episode fourteen. Harding Blizzard and Marvel So Hard. Yep. Like Host Obi One X Two, Yogi Zilla with a special guest, uh, Chip, aka Captain Chaos. What's going on? All right, we'll get these cameras up and we'll get right into it. That's not our official opening, obviously. No. All right, yet. so so uh, Chip, he's gonna do the music and then we'll be quiet and then he'll <laughs> count us yeah. in. <laughs> for everybody that is listening right now, we're starting a little bit late. For everybody that's waiting. For this to go live, yes, I apologize. I'm the worst host in America, aka blame Yogi. Fair enough. Well, I don't want to say blame Chip because you know he's new. He's, I mean, I just met the guy, man. You know, I can't, <laughs> I can't start blaming him already. Yeah, well, you know, when do we ever get done with a a B-team podcast in an hour and a half? That's, like, almost never happened. Yeah, we're not, (laughs) yeah, no. It doesn't, period. It's part of the fun. But it was, it's it's kind of the thing where if, if I set it up to where it's just me and Yogi, I screw myself because then everything is switched around when another person joins the call so it's like i don't even want to do it so then when i get to do it i'm late because you know we're mm-hmm. starting a bit late and uh, it's just driving me it's the fun the fun through of the video. Ball. that, oh, that that's usually when i forget to hit the record button <laughs> Right. Well, I'm not live quite yet. I mean, we're gonna be a little bit late, so we will go. A little, we'll go over tonight. But I just. Oh, we're definitely. I was going ready. Over I was ready at nine o'clock. Okay, <laughs> and because uh, I get done with my what I do doing about you know about nine. What the hell did I? Oh wow, I'm a noob. No, you guys can. I I, I just put a test up in the chat. I'm in the right <laughs> chat. Yep. All right. <laughs> There's no because there's no other messages there. There's some lurkers. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I think All there's right. some, there's <laughs> some there's some yeah. They're around. We got uh 
pork chop in the in there. Stan Farina, one of my friends. Okay. And uh, not Panda should be joining us too. Are you on Twitter? Chip. Yes. Captain Chaos. All all lowercase. Uh, Doesn't matter. With the I, no, there's no A in there, right? Yeah. Wait, what? C A P T I N C H A O S. C A P T I N. Okay. C H A O S. Got it. It's because the Genesis didn't wouldn't allow seven letters. <laughs> yep. That's weird. <clears throat> We're spoiled now. Man. And Mr. Mr. Chaos, you are going to be right between us on the screen. <laughs> kinky. I'll be on your yeah, very kinky. Uh, I'll be on your right side. You'll you'll be on your left, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one or the other. It's going to be somewhere. Oh, I know. I, I know which one of you is which now. And uh, yeah, I've, I've seen pictures of Yogi. Since we're Facebook buddies, I mean, just look at—I mean, just look at the uh, the picture he's made of me. Um, if this—I wouldn't have so much white light in my room. I would be the yellow guy. <laughs> so just just putting that out there right now. Well, um, I would be the yellow guy that well, he's portrayed me to be, and and the um, and our logo. Come you're on, a, you're a Simpsons character, bro. I'm a sim- oh that's your that's your okay yeah whatever. You're Ned Flanders, uh, unknown neighbor. I don't even like you right now. <laughs> All right, Captain Chaos, Yogi Yobi, blah blah blah. Got it. All right, let's do it. All right, count us, count us down. Let, let us know when the music starts. I'm gonna go. Uh, we're gonna be doing. Uh, I'm gonna be doing my little own pre, uh, you know, two minute intermission thing. Mission thing, blah, 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 blah. yeah, that. And Chip, remember, no matter what goes wrong tonight, you volunteered for this. Yep. <laughs> I, I have the Cinderella claws of two a.m. That that works. I don't think Can we you guys hear the music at all. No. Huh? Wait. No. Mm-mm. No music here. Can't hear the music. That sucks. You gotta use the Skype player, I'm telling you. I thought I was. You gotta play it through Skype player. Pop the wave. I'm not, oh, and... I'm not on I'm not, I'm not on Skype player right now. Is that what it is? Yeah, you gotta load up Skype player and then you pop the wave file in there. Oh play. dude, come on. Anyway. <laughs> we're getting ready to start here. We'll start bobbing our heads when we hear the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to imagine how cool it is. <laughs> it's all right. The same thing happened on our show tonight. We didn't have... Uh, I'm waiting for, to, for the intro music, and uh, Ryan says, okay, we're starting, and then I'm just waiting for the music to start, and about 30 seconds later, he goes, uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go, guys. I'm going to do the intro here. All right. Here we go. Welcome back. It's horseplay right here. Obi Wan X two, and right across from me on the other side of the screen, Yogi Zilla. And as you guys can see, right between us, got Captain Chaos. This is What's weird, on, guys. <laughs> What's going on, guys? What's Before we get into the title and everything, how's everybody doing? Good. That was the best uh, pre-show Good. ever. Yeah, no, it wasn't at all. But I, I should have just kept going title, right? Yeah, that was what it is. All right, guys. It's episode 14 of Horseplay. Harding Blizzard and Marvel So Hard is the title. You gotta Special put emphasis on the this. so. On the so, you'd be like, so hard. I'm sorry. Let me try that again. <laughs> Is that, how you, is that a rewind, right? Okay. That's a good rewind. That's a good rewind. Episode 14, Horseplay. I did screwed up already. Why do you do that, man? Why do you just let me make my opening? All right, guys. The title of the show is <laughs> Harding Blizzard and Marvel So Hard. Is that better? Jesus. That works. Special guest here, Captain Chaos. He's got a, I want to say maybe a little expertise 
on said matter? Uh, <laughs> or said I title? know a little bit about the Marvel <laughs> Universe. Well, we do want to let you guys know that right here on Obi-Wan X2, uh, we're live. You guys can come check us out right here on the channel, uh, right here in chat. You guys can also hit us up during the show anytime on our on our Twitter pages right here, Obi-Wan X2, at Captain Chaos. Make sure you spell it right, T-I-N-C-H-A-O, and at YogiZilla. We'll see you guys there. See you guys there. That was kind of like almost a sign off. Hey, good show, guys. I know. Good game. All right. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> yeah. So, Yogi, I, um, you go ahead and open this up because, you know, I mean, I do it every week. <laughs> I just want to do the opener and say, hey, guys, what's going on? Play the cool music and then do my, you know. Bop your head. It just bop my head to the to what, what it's, what's being said at the time. So yeah, tonight we'll be talking about uh, a lot of stuff going on in, in uh, the world of Blizzard and uh, and Marvel. Which you know, there's some co- there's some common threads there. You know, lots of boobs and uh, <laughs> muscular men with no shirts on for no reason. I, I don't like that part, obviously, but you know, they got something. I wish it was the other way around. You know, the women running around with no shirts on. Oh yeah, that that too. The, that that would work. Well, yeah, they kind of have that. Like the yeah. the the drow that the, the drow or it's a drow or drow I always forget drow drow it is drow right so the drow the the dark elves you know they they usually are pretty scantily clad walking around in bras I mean fighting in a bra and undies is very practical I, I say you don't need armor it, it it's it's the distraction effect I think yeah yeah <laughs> I'm sure that would really work too while the guys are just like looking at the cleavage they're like yep. Get the heads chopped off. Don't. What a terrible well, way to go you... out. My sword's up here. <laughs> but your boobs are down there. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. And uh, so, you know, we're talking a lot all about all that stuff. And we brought uh, our resident F- expert right now, Chip Silla, a.k.a. Captain Chaos, you know, as we mentioned already. He's going to give us the, 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 the lowdown on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken... Everything we know now, as far as like all the retcons and creative liberties that they're taking, pretty much started like in '08. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I guess uh, according to that special that was on the other night, the Marvel Cinematic Universe got its uh, start at Comic Con, at San Diego Comic Con, in 2006 when they announced uh, the first movie, which was Iron Man. Mm, so. Okay. And, and Iron Man came out in 08, didn't it? Yeah. So there we go. Oh, yeah. I know a little something, Chip. I know a little something. Yeah, I'm horrible with dates. He's got so. the facts down. <laughs> well, we're going to have a whole segment dedicated to that. So hopefully you could uh, pass our test of uh, stamina. And uh, well, we'll get to that. Well, I was listening to your, your guys' uh, show from last week. Now that you're on iTunes, I did subscribe. Woohoo! And... Um, yeah, I was listening to what your thoughts and theories on this on the on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and uh, wanted to come on and discuss it with you guys because you guys had a lot of good theories, uh, some slightly altered facts, and uh, figured we could set the record straight. And uh, uh, th- there's so much happening in the, uh, the Marvel Universe these days; it's just amazing in yeah. terms of. TV and movie shows. I want uh, more movies. I'm sorry. I want, I want more, more movies. I want more TV shows, but uh, and and they're coming. But um, it's heroes. Woo! Oh, sorry. That's not yeah, Marvel. Though. Yeah. I don't care. No, it's but not come Marvel, on. But it's it's a superhero show. This is what I've been waiting for it to come back out, man. Yeah, you know, growing up as a kid, I. Uh, it's always what I wanted, you know, more Mar- Marvel shows on TV, more shows about comic book characters, all that stuff. And in the next couple of years, uh, it's just going to be amazing with what Marvel has planned. So I can't uh, wait. Yes, neither can I. I mean, DC's coming out with a ton of stuff, too. They have Gotham coming uh, next year. They have The Flash. But DC, oh. DC has been full of lots of empty promises, though. What what else does DC have coming out? Uh, they have Constantine. Or Constantine is in pilot. Oh yes. 
Um, Flash is almost guaranteed for next year. And uh, what was it? Uh, Gotham is already confirmed. And Gotham is basically Smallville, in, but uh, you're dealing with a 12-year-old Batman. Hmm. Oh, my God. And it's supposedly <laughs> it, there's, you know, originally it's it was the story of a young it was supposed to be the story of a young Jim Gordon being a cop in Gotham. Uh, they have now said, no, by the final episode, you will see Cape and Cowell. Wow. And, you know, like I think I Selena think so. Kyle is supposed to be one of uh Bruce Wayne's classmates or something like that. And uh, you're going to see the origins of the Joker, the Riddler, uh, the Penguin as Cobblepot is going to be uh, a regular on the show and basically the underling to a to um, some female. I, I can't remember the character. Uh, who, I think it's Jada Pinkett Smith is going to be the mob boss and Cobblepot is going to work for her. So, so, so essentially, you're saying there's going to be a show. This is a show, right? This, this is a television series. Yeah. So it's going to be a television series of Batman with all his rivals as kids. <laughs> uh, younger versions of them. Cobblepot will probably be in his twenties or thirties, something like that. Um, Batman. But, yes, I think they're starting. But as a, at a younger age, old. then. Yes. Wow. I don't like that. Well, you know, Smallville like was that. kind of a hard pill to swallow until you gave it a real chance, and you found out it was actually pretty cool. I still didn't like Smallville. Oh, I love Can't Smallville. The The last two seasons were great. I wish they did more with the Justice League stuff. Yeah. That's the thing. It took a long time for for them to get to that point where it was like, okay, this is the this is the Superman universe that I know and love. Like, the first two mm. or three seasons were all, like, soap opera and, you know, silly little teeny bopper type antics. And then it got more serious. Well, yeah, it was the Freak of the Week uh, show at that <laughs> point. Um, at, do you guys watch Arrow at all? I mean, I, they, yeah, they are hardcore. It's my favorite show. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, last night's episode, that you know, they introduced the Suicide no, Squad. don't tell me. Mm. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> okay, I'll stop that. Well, I mean... I, well, was... it's been leading up to that. It's been leading up to that yes. for weeks. So. <laughs> so I'll stop there. But thank you. I might have to get into it. It's been rough. The first three or four episodes that I've seen, a uh, little grueling. I'm, I'm uh, telling you, dude. It's like six episodes before you actually see it all piecing together, because with the flashbacks and everything that they do in it, I mean, he is. I mean, he's just like a super superhero. I mean, I don't. Man, I get that. It's just. Like we said last time, it's just way too much exposition and character development. I want a little bit of action. I need some kind of satisfaction. It's well, dude, really I big. guarantee you, I guarantee you, once you catch up to where we're at now, you're going to see things that you're going to go, holy crap, I'm watching this every week now. All right. Because of certain things that happen, that people get powers that they're not supposed to, and dude... Okay, you got it's, me. You you and Chip you have gotta sold, do it. You man. and Chip have sold me on it. I trust both your opinions. You, Especially you, uh, Chip has almost got me uh, subscribing to Marvel uh, Unlimited, and I'm, and I'm like such a cheap bastard these days. I'm like, I don't want any more bills, even if I can afford it, and I don't want any more recurring bills or extra things I don't really need. And then he's like, Marvel Unlimited, you get all this stuff. I'm like, oh man, oh man. And it's, Mar Marvel Unlimited, if you are a comic book fan has got to be one of the greatest values ever. Uh, I'm two weeks into it so far, because it, it was the 99 cent special for South by Southwest. And, uh, you know, it's there, there are just so many comic books there. Uh, you don't know where to start. I haven't read Marvel in 20 years. Um, and all of a sudden it was like, I, you know, you have comics going back to the 90s in some instances. You know, they have so, a lot of the classics from the 60s as well. And it was just like overwhelming. And I just said, well, I always wanted to read uh, the Civil War storyline. So I start, you know, I just started there. And uh, I, the first weekend, I probably read 20 issues uh, in a day. And, uh, 
I'm still reading them. It's just uh, other things keep coming up, but I think it's a service that I'm going to keep for the, uh, for the next few months at least. And, but yeah, you'll be, you'll be blown away, uh, with what, with, uh, the choices. I mean, if you're going to watch the Captain America movie in a couple of weeks, you probably want to read the Winter Soldier uh, storyline from Captain America before you go out and see it. So now that storyline I'm actually familiar with. I just need to re- okay. get reacquainted with it because, like, like we talked, we talked about on your show on Agents of mm-hmm. Shield cast. Uh, Captain America is one of the ones I used to collect very heavily, and mm-hmm. I'm one of the weird Captain America fans that actually liked the uh, Streets of Poison story arc, mm-hmm. which spanned like eight to ten uh, issues, and I, and a lot of the Die hard or hardcore Marvel fans say that's like one of the worst story arcs ever, and I thought it was great because we saw a gritty, disheveled, you know, uh, drug addict Captain America. He wasn't so much of a Boy Scout anymore. I was like, whoa, this is pretty hardcore. You know, they started going to a very dark place. I, I like that. So I, yeah, you, do, you know, man, damn you, Chip, damn you. <laughs> just give it a shot, and you just will be blown away. But get, getting back to Arrow, I mean, once you get past those first six episodes and then when you get to season two, you can't swing a dead cat without a uh, DC rev- – two or three – hitting uh, two or three DC references. Between characters, um, there was a reference – on last night's show, there was a reference to one of uh, the big comic book writers. I don't know if he's still doing it, but – Back uh, in the 80s and 90s, uh, the the hotel suite is named after a uh, one of the comic book writers. And you, once you hear it, you'll go, oh, yeah. Hmm. Wow. So in a nutshell, what's the what's Arrow about for the uninitiated? And what's All the right. best part well, about it? I don't want to get too much into it well, uh, someone, just because Stan, you haven't seen Stan it. Farina asked in the chat, <clears throat> just like uh, a, a non-spoiler description of it to sell to sell people listening in and people in the chat all right the fans asked i'm gonna try if i tell you too much i am so sorry no just give us no not spoilers you can do without spoilers i can try man if i want to tell somebody about something i want to tell them everything from like the the time the movie started the show started to right now like i can explain everything that's happening in every episode okay but it would take way too long so i don't want to do it the short version Basically, is, guys, is. Go ahead. Captain it's Chaos about Green is Arrow. Gonna help us out. <laughs> He's gonna help us out. He's gonna bail it's, us out. It's Green Arrow. It's uh, Green Arrow Year One. I guess would probably would be the short explanation. Without giving, you're trying to do it without spoilers. I think that would be uh, what is safe to say. There is some retcon going on, but uh, all of it is passable. Well, D- DC DC is reinventing their whole universe anyway, so I think it's necessary for them to do the retcon now while they're kind of in this volatile state anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, our Arrow is about a a family that basically the the father was corrupt and basically made the family made his ship go down while stranding his son on an island for a certain amount of years. I'm not going to say that. Um, but then he learns to defend himself and use weaponry and just just become a killer. That's, that's the best I can explain it there. But he can do anything with a bow and arrow. I mean, anything. Um, and he comes back home. He finds his fights his way back home and uh, just becomes like a vigilante, uh, saving you know saving his town and watching his mother destroy but try to rebuild and. You know, their family and the town hub both. You know, it's a really, really good story that if you guys really like some action and you guys can get past the first six episodes, um, you guys are really, really going to like it. And it has Katie Cassidy. Very much so. <laughs> and for all the for the, all the gamer chicks out there, there are quite a few scenes with him without his shirt. So go for it. Um, I'm sure you'll have fun. Next. And it has Katie Cassidy. <laughs> it has Katie Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'll watch anything she's in. <laughs> or out of. 
So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, it has something for everyone in terms of eye candy, at the very least. Yeah, and I've experienced it, it, that so far, for sure. <laughs> like I, I told people, and I've told you too, you get past, just finish the first season. You got to finish the whole first season. If you don't like it, just stop watching it. But I guarantee you, you're more than 10 times out of 10, nine times out of 10, you're going to go watch the second one. Just because, unless you just don't like that kind of show. If you're a guy, you don't, never mind. I think you guys both double teamed it and sold it well. So, and it was a good uh, introduction for, for people that aren't really uh, comic fans, but it might like that kind of plot. So, I'm well, even and, and curious now. <laughs> go, go ahead. But I'm, I'm not necessarily a comic book guy. I am more of a. I will watch every single movie that's out. I own all the Spider Mans. I own all the Batmans. I own all the, all every movie that's came out. I own them all, whether they're in 3D, IMAX, you know, however it came out, Blu-ray, I have them all. Because I, I like super, I don't read comics, sorry. Not that kind of nerd this week, guys, or geek this <laughs> week, guys. But yes, I will, I will geek it out with a night of superhero movies. They got to be good ones. I don't want to watch the old Batman crap. I want to watch the new ones. Thor, um, you know, with Captain America coming out. You're, yeah. And we're going to get into that. Definitely. We're going to get into oh, that. Don't, but anyway, don't... that's what kind of guy I am. Well, let's go. Obi, I'll tell you what. I was going to say this. If you have, or if anyone, if you have any or anyone has uh, apprehensions about reading comics, if you feel that there's a taboo there, fair enough. But this is what you do. You buy the volumes that are the books, and then you call them graphic novels. Suddenly, it's okay. Because you just, you don't read the individual comic. You just buy the graphic novel. The, the whole no, bound I works. Could... I could give a rat's patootie if anybody thinks that, no, I write, I read comics. <laughs> I don't care what anybody thinks, and you know that. I, know, I just, just don't I'm like to read comics. Choice. Well, I just, I, I mean, I know if you, re, if you keep comics nice and you just, you know, you read them and then just keep, keep, take care of them, put them in their sleeves, they can be worth some money eventually. Great money. Yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> I got 50,000 books in the basement that'll tell you different. <laughs> You don't have the one everybody yeah, wants. There yes. Used to, there used to be a market for it. I remember I had the Maximum Carnage, uh, the, the yeah. first one where Carnage appeared in Spider-Man. I think it was Amazing Spider-Man 26 or something, or 68, I believe. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I've lost track. I mean, that would back. probably be Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, if it was 68. You're probably right, actually, yeah, because I was confused Amazing and Spectacular. Right. Yes, but that sounds right. Spectacular Spider-Man number 68, I think, was the one where Carnage first appeared. And that one at the time, like just a year or two afterwards, was worth like 80 bucks, which isn't too bad. But I mean, this is back when print was still a thing, and now digital's yep. kind of killed that whole marketplace. But that's a whole yep. other discussion. Real quick, well, guys. Well, you got to remember. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if, if anybody wants to leave us voicemail, and we're not doing any call-ins uh, today, uh, but future shows we will. Our voicemail is on the overlay if you're watching video. But if not, it's uh, 206-415-4987. Again, 206-415-4987. Leave us a voicemail, uh, especially if, if you like what we're talking about and you have your own uh, views to share on that. We'd like to hear it. And um, so, yeah, let's see what, what else we got. Want to jump into the news, guys? Well, and then we'll uh, talk I just, Marvel. I just... I just wanted to make a point uh, to what Obi was saying about the bags and the boards and collecting that. Uh, you know, like I said, there's 50, there's 50,000 books in the basement. Uh, I haven't really bought one in 20 years, but um, that's what's great about the Marvel Unlimited. Uh, going digital, it, you, you don't have to worry about collecting them. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, keeping them in mint condition. You don't have to put them in bags and boards and store all these things somewhere. Mm. You have it, you read the story, you're done. And you, know, you don't have any of that crap to worry about. And con considering most comic books these days are three or $4 an issue Oof. and the, tr the trade paperbacks or whatever you call them are anywhere from 10 to $20 a whack. Ten bucks a month is, you know, you're stealing it at that point, at that price, and you get all the great stories. And it's great for the consumer, terrible for the publishers. <laughs> and the I don't artists. think 
it's not the publishers or the artists that are getting hurt on this. I, it's uh, the local comic book store. Yeah, they're definitely getting the worst end of the deal. But there's something to be said about having physical copies. I was talking about this with video games, too. Like something about having that new video game mm -hmm. smell, the new comic book sp smell, the new book smell, and, and cracking the binding. I think there's always going to be a place for that. But yeah, that, <sighs> it's rough. It's rough. Cause I, 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 I used to dream of having like an internet cafe slash hobby shop comic book store type thing mm -hmm. you know, one day. And now it's like, well, that shoots down that dream. Well, we can still do the <laughs> internet cafe, I guess. <laughs> I had right. one. I had one of those. I, uh, my, it was my friend's store. Uh, they did the video game section, and I brought the comic books in. And uh, I lost my shirt in the deal. But <laughs> it, uh, you know, it, it just didn't work out. But uh, it sounds nice. But, yes, we're going to a world – world where nobody buys anything physical anymore we all just rent or lease it from uh the various publishers yeah like something funny and somebody in chat said something um and <laughs> when he was a kid he used to sell off dick tracy comics <laughs> and make thousands of dollars dude genius i remember doing the same thing <laughs> I had 300 copies of The Death of Superman. I saw, uh, and I had a couple of stores. I sold like the first 50 at cover price, the next 50 at 10 bucks, uh, et cetera, et cetera, up to the last 25 where I was getting 50 bucks a book by the end of the weekend. Wow. Crazy. You can't flip them like that anymore, though. Mm, no, no, well, you can't. The death of Superman, that was definitely a big thing. I remember how big of a deal that was. And then oh, it came yeah. out with like was it like four or five different Supermans and like different story arcs there. It was like crazy. Yep. Um, See what the funny the funny back. part. The funny part one of the funny parts of this is the, the cost of comic books are still ten to twenty dollars a pop. And then they can go just go digital now. Yeah. I mean oh, yeah. really? Yeah, and I did the when DC did started the new fifty two where they tried to reboot their continuity and failed, um, because they didn't really reboot. Uh, I was paying three or four bucks for a digital copy and had nothing to show for it. Yeah, right. Well, even with the and like you said with the DC Unlimited, you got just everything, and you just don't have to keep anything. Everything's yep. already there. For you guys are looking for some good comics, and uh, <clears throat> you know you guys just love to read comics, like like Captain Chaos. Get over to DC Unlimited, $10 Marvel a month. Unlimited. Marvel, Marvel Unlimited. Marvel oh, Unlimited. Oh my goodness! Ooh, <laughs> sac sacrilege. Yeah. Marvel, Marvel Unlimited, where you can get ten dollars a month. Basically, every comic and any comic you want to read. So and, I don't know where to get that. And for people that don't like to read, I, I hear the app will read the comics for you. <laughs> Well, damn, I'm I'm in. So no one can say they, no one has an excuse anymore. Apparently, there are some where uh, there is audio enabled. I haven't r run into one of those app issues yet, but yes, they have audio enabled. They have uh, AR codes uh, in them and things like that. I haven't checked all that. I haven't run into those yet, though. Crazy, and I hear that some of them are even interactive. But anyway, let's let's move on because we have someone. Yep. That wants us to. He's insisting that we share this message. I have a friend over in the UK that's tuning in, Spaffy Spaffy Zilla, <laughs> the other Zilla, <laughs> and he says that uh, our show does not have enough horses in it. I'm, I'm sorry about that, bud. We'll work on that. He wanted you guys to be aware. Of that. <laughs> there you go. I got a Chithulu. There's your horse. <laughs> nay, nay. <laughs> See, Chip was Chip was prepared. <laughs> I'm That's, sorry, I don't have a freaking horse in my office. He's got all so. the props. He's like Carrot Top. <laughs> so, so uh, what was he saying? Yeah, Pterodactyl. Yeah. Sandman. That works. <laughs> he's, a, he's got a big old head. Goodness. Yeah, man. It's a freaking, it's a toy. Yeah. <laughs> Stan, Stan Farina in the chat. Uh, and this is why everybody's got to tune in live and watch the video and, and be in the chat. Stan Farina just said... Uh, Marvel Unlimited is a good deal. He just paid eighteen dollars for a hard copy of Volume One of Doctor Who: Prisoners of Time. Oof. 
Very that, nice. And it adds up. I mean, you, yeah, four bucks may not be much, eighteen bucks may not be much, but you multiply that by ten, twenty, thirty, and then you're wondering where all your money's going. Ugh, we've all been there before. I think I did about uh, ten or twenty. Uh, I was doing probably ten books a week during the time I did the new forty two. So I was probably blowing about a hundred to hundred and fifty bucks a month on comics. Whew, I don't doubt yeah. it. That's yeah. the way I used to be. Uh, the wife and I used to be like that about Starbucks, and then we cut that back. <laughs> we spent about twice that much on Starbucks. Oof, never again. But uh, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we were crazy, dude. Just hey, caffeinated. you spent with one month, you could have went and bought a freaking Starbucks machine and made it yourself. <laughs> There's something to be said about convenience, man. We're in an instant gratification culture, man. So Spaffy also said, Obi, this is for you, that you channel. The horse very well, and he and he believes that you have the spirit of Hecarim in you. There we go. League of Legends always comes back. Always comes back to League of Legends. I'm going to f- freaking play Hecarim tonight, dude. I'm telling you, Hecarim is great. Just running in and just be like Leroy Jenkins. What was, what was his name again? Spathy. Spathy. Okay, you're live, man. Awesome. Thanks for watching, listening. I'm going to go, and I'm going to make people let me play Hecarim 24-7 for the next 10 games in League of Legends. I am going to battle out Hecarim. I'm probably going to go jungle or top, or just say screw it and go Hecarim AP mid. But oh, we're going to rock man. it out in dedication to you, my friend. That's a ballsy Thanks, move. <laughs> yes, AP mid. AP mid Hecarim. I'm going to do it. AP he- I almost say AP Hecarim does not scale very well, but it is really fun. It can, if you do it right. Yeah, you, you gotta get the, uh, what you call it, the, the burning aura, what do you call it, I don't remember now. Anyway, let's get, let's move on, because we got some news, and then we gotta jump into the what? to our feature, talk about uh more Marvel stuff. Are you guys ready? Right when you are. For the obligatory news. The news. The news. I'm going to try to blaze through news. it. A lot of this stuff is a little old, but we kind of skipped over it the past couple of weeks. So uh, one of the things is Jack Tredden, uh, CEO and president of Sony uh, Computer Entertainment America, resigns after a 20-year tenure. That's a pretty long haul. And uh, I know the, the Sony fanboys are, are, are heard about it. Uh, oh, no. Luckily, there's none here, so we're, we're okay. What's going to happen to my PlayStation 4? <laughs> there's what? not going to be a 5. Well, well, well no worries. Sean Layden... The uh, chief, op- uh, chief officer of operations, COO, will be taking over, and the uh, transition will officially take place April first. Uh, some of the gamers out there see this as a sign of uh, a weakening Sony PlayStation brand, but uh, you know Jack has assured everyone that he leaves the PlayStation in a quote-unquote position of strength. Uh, yeah. What do you? Okay. Chip has something to say about that. I saw it. I saw it, the, the facial expression. What do you think about that, Chip? And Chip, go ahead. <laughs> I, I I think consoles are. I I think this uh, consoles are a dying breed. Period. I um, I think they're. Uh, this is it. Probably there may be one more generation, but I think uh, everything is just going to go to uh, the PC because there is no reason for the console anymore. Yeah. And we're seeing that with, uh, you know, the lack of exclusives. Uh, everything is available on the PC. Um, the PCs are now connected to most people, you know, you or you can connect your PC to your TV or stream it to your TV. It's just uh, that they're they're going to be a dinosaur if they're not already. Yeah. Oh no, they're already there. They're already there, but we're just too stubborn to realize that. Yes, do I want an Xbox One? You're damn right. <laughs> Same here. Okay. Yes, am I going to get one? Yep. But do I think, am I going to keep my computer to the point where I will spend thousands of dollars on it to keep it running right? Yep. Because guess what? I Even with whatever you play, the graphics are going to get more intense. The, the, the CPU power has to be higher or you won't be able to run it. Uh, your graphics card has to be this point, or you won't be able to run it, even in low graphics. What they needed, what the PC needs is, uh, 
I don't know if standardization is the right word. It's got to become more convenient because yeah. one of the reasons I don't play PC games, uh, besides, you know, because a I don't want to be stuck in front of a monitor and a keyboard and all that, because uh, I do that all day at work. But the other thing is, you know, if a game if I have to d work and deal with settings to get the game to work for me, fuck it, I'm out. Um, I want to be able to throw the disc in and know that it's going to play, that it's not going to bog down, you know, 20 hours into a Civ five thing because there's too much going on in the game now. And, uh, because I have the graphic settings maxed out that it's going to crash on me. Um, the game, it needs to play and with, without me having to fiddle and, you know, go up go underneath the hood to get it to work. So and then you're probably the... crying inside, aren't you? Hmm? I'm sorry. I cut you off. I apologize for that. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to stop for, so you're probably crying inside. Then all you're, you won't be able to just stick the, stick the disc into the PlayStation four or the Xbox one and be able to play anymore. <laughs> Cause really, really with all computer yeah. games, you have to mess with your settings. If you don't, you won't be able to play. But, but you are going to lose your, the, the majority of your audience, if they have to do that, uh, most people are lazy and most people don't want to deal with that type of crap. And it's why uh, PC gaming up until this point hasn't uh, become the dominant force, because most people, you know, just they plug and play. Yeah. And until the PC can do that, um, you know, it's they're not going to take it over, but it's, I think they're starting to get closer to that, but you're right. I mean, if you, if you really want all that stuff to work and work right, um, you know, I don't know what I'll do. If there, if, the, if there isn't a simple solution, maybe I pick up another hobby or I keep playing my X bone and PS4. See, uh, one of our folks in the chat, he, he he's in the in the Twitch chat, but he's sending me Skype messages. Like this is an incognito chat. Seriously, come <laughs> on, Spathy, share it with the rest of the chat. But he said he has he he just read my mind. Uh, one of the biggest banes to the consoles is the fact that they're closed box systems. I mean, they're rely they're putting a lot of stock in the fact, that, like you said, that they're convenient, and that's you know that's always going to be a big selling point. And it's the uniformity. That's that's a key word right there. Uniformity as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's something that PC lacks a little bit. Steam helps create an ecosystem, that uniformity and that connectivity, that accessibility, and also the portability of the content. But it's still not an easy out of the box experience because there's, you know, end user fault where people are just derps and they do things to their computer to get malware on the computer, maybe go to the wrong point sites, whatever they're doing. And the next thing you know, things are not working properly. And no one wants to troubleshoot when all you want to do is oh. just jump in into a game and play. You know, uh, and I feel the same way too. And I'm a techie, and if I have to like optimize settings and you know close background tasks and get everything just right just to be able to play the game, then let alone if I want to stream it as well, then I, I that that makes me want to do other things instead. So you know what? I'm just gonna veg. I'm gonna watch some TV or something. Well, so that's well think of, true. Well, think about how pissed off you get when you g come home with a brand new game uh, for your Xbox 360 or whatever. And you fire the thing up, and there's a you know there's a system update, oh. and then <laughs> then you and then you pop the game in. Well, there's a day one patch, and then well you gotta configure and get yourself signed up with Origin, and you know because to access the EA servers. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, so I, I want to just come home and pop the game in and be playing within five minutes and not sit through. 20 minutes of patches and software updates and go through all these hoops. Well, you know what it is and, too? There's so much middleware in mm -hmm. there that um, these systems, the con Xbox One and the PS4 are very powerful and they're comparable to like, you know, maybe lower t lower range, high end uh, PCs. You know, they're not, they're, their specs are no joke. You know, uh, they may not be bleeding edge, edge technology, but the th the fact that they have all this extra software DRM, the all the mm -hmm. middle stuff you got, all the middleware you have to go through, it 